Welcome back to Kin in Line. This is part 94 by my reckoning. Um, we're in the latter half of the 1980s and after my termination of my marriage, I was a bachelor again and I was exploring the historic heart of Port Elizabeth, which as you know was established from about 1820 by the British settlers who came out that year and their descendants and the local people obviously who uh, joined in in developing the city. But a, a lot of the character is to be found in these old uh, buildings from the 19th century like there, be, there are about six of these Victorian uh, Gothic, I think they call it, uh, churches stone churches. Uh, this is the Holy Trinity Anglican Church in Central and yeah in those days Central was safe and I spent a, quite a few hours obviously sketching this and I'm quite proud of the result even though my eldest son at the age of about two contributed with a little bit of a scribble on the corner there. Um, so this is oil pastels Plenty of lines used to come up with this. Unfortunately, a lot of these churches have now been cordoned off with steel uh, fencing, it, uh, uglifying them badly. Uh, this is another, also done in the same time, probably about 86 or 7. Um, looking down towards Donkin Street with the Donkin Row on the right. That's a famous row of um, terraced housing, which dates back from the 1860s, as does the church here, which is the Hill Presbyterian Church. And these lovely, um, this lovely terrace of houses on the left, which also extend further to the left. There's another three or four buildings to the left. And I lived across the road from this church, uh, the St. John's Methodist, sorry about that. Um, again, took hours to create this work. Um, and again, Luke added his touch there, probably thought there was some, something missing there as a two-year-old or whatever. And here is quite a quite a panorama really of the Port Elizabeth um, seafront really inside the harbour. So that's where the early town developed and then the harbour was built out from it. So we're at the end of a pier looking back to this to these cranes and this ship. Bollards there, uh, and then some historic buildings. There's the 1860s um, lighthouse, and next to it, the pyramid from 1820, which is a uh, in memory of uh, Elizabeth Duncan, whose husband named Port Elizabeth after her. She had died in 1817 in India. And there's the same church, the um, Hill Presbyterian, and this is the Campanile from 1823, uh, 1923, which was actually a 100th anniversary, a centenary celebration, really, of the arrival of the settlers. And then we go into North End. Uh, during my visit to the harbour, I also came across these yachts on the dry, as they call it, being sort of maintained, scraped down, repainted, I guess. Uh, looks like a combi down on the left. 
Yeah, this unfortunately, uh, I think this is done in, almost, in ballpoint. That previous picture is done in a sort of fine liner and that ink fades if you expose it to light a lot quicker than ordinary uh, ballpoint. This is again the Hill Presbyterian Church from 1860 and on the right are the, uh, is the top section of the Duncan Row of uh, terraced housing which also date from 1860 to 1880. They've unfortunately been refurbished and have lost much of their character. Instead of being maintained, they basically were allowed to deteriorate and then an inappropriate uh, restoration was carried out in the, around 2000, 2014, I think, it started. So a lot of people driving along the freeway in PE, look down and they see this uh, gothic looking tower. Uh, this is from on the old post office, uh, German looking sort of design. So I watercolored it afterwards, after drawing it in, in um, charcoal. Yeah, this one is a bit dark. But this was the view from the one end of Lawrence Street across towards Richmond Hill. And that's a church tower across there on top of a what was a, it became a Dutch Reformed church in the 1920s, I think. But before that, it was actually a multiracial or non-racial church um, with, by the, I forget the name. So a lot of uh, interesting buildings down there in that valley with the Russell Road is at the bottom there. Um, when I got to PE, uh, South End had been totally obliterated. That was a non-racial area. All that was left was this uh, Christian church and I think two mosques so the rest they flattened and this was before I drew this in about 86 or 7 and of course now this area is south end it's a lego land of townhouse sort of soulless townhouse complexes before it was a bit of a slum but then you know so was so were other parts of PE that weren't destroyed um yeah, this is again a detail of St. John's Methodist Church. By this stage, I hadn't realized it, but I needed classes. So I was working on this scale probably because I, I wasn't seeing so well and not really realizing. So that's a steeple there with a bit of foliage in the foreground. But I suppose one advantage is I was drawing larger than I normally tended to do. And so here we also have a historic church from about the 1860s. And this is the um, Roman Catholic Church in White's Road, subsequently renamed uh, St. Augustine's. That's right. Uh, I quite like the fact that I've sort of done it in just a few lines, you know. It takes some confidence to be able to just put it down and that's it. And on the right here you see a wall which marks the uh, a corner of the Opera House, Port Elizabeth Opera House, which is the oldest um, opera house still being used in Africa. So it dates from about the 1890s. And then eventually I moved from um, Lawrence Street in Central to this uh, to a flat in at the bottom of Brickmakers Kloof and this was the view of one of those the historic little houses in the street behind uh, 
forget its name. Anyway, that was my view from the balcony. And then if I went out the other side of my flat and looked up to the, on the edge of the hill, um, we have this, uh, these houses overlooking the sort of lower Brickmaker's Cliff and the Barpins Valley. So old parts of Central are full of these historic buildings. Many of have been lost to development or just in the recent years just to decay and lack of maintenance, which is very sad. So I caught Central just before this, the rot set in post-94. Um, so here's the historic um, Campanile, and behind it on the right there is actually the first railway station. It, it became the main Port Elizabeth railway station, but the concourse, the original concourse was built also in about, the, I think about the 1880s. Um, so Port Elizabeth to Utenag, that railway line is almost as old, I believe, as, as the other earliest railway lines in Cape Town and Durban. And this on the left, of course, is the big freeway that they put up in the, from about the late 60s, early 70s. It was in place completely when I arrived here in, in 1984. So I had quite a lot of fun painting this thing. I just did this drawing in situ and then use a kind of expressionist technique to just go for it and make a picture, you know. Not too concerned with realism here. I just wanted to, a bright, sort of lively picture. And this is the view down Main Street, which has subsequently been renamed uh, towards the City Hall, which is also from the 1860s, and the old post office tower we saw earlier on the left. So that, that the post office is behind. Um, and that's also iconic, really, view of Port Elizabeth. And all modern, sort of, more modern buildings. This whole street, uh, Main Street, was rebuilt, really, from the, the... It was a 19th century Main Street, developed over the first 60-odd years. 60 to 80 years, and then that was basically replaced 100 years later by Art Deco stuff, and then the Art Deco was replaced by more modern buildings, and subsequently, of course, Main Street has ceased to be the CBD of Port Elizabeth, and much of the, many of the buildings that uh, were occupied by banks and building societies and whatever have moved to green acres and further afield. So this whole drawing book here is a bit of a history lesson because yeah I was finally drawing my environment in Port Elizabeth. Now, this little water carrier statue used to be in the garden in front of the city hall. There was a lovely mayor's garden, they called it. And it was a big traffic circle in the, initially. Once the, the market square, of course, in front of the city hall was initially a market square. And there used to be cattle, truck, you know, wagons, ox wagons and bales of wool and and then put them onto ships right nearby. And so eventually the 